game. And they have more Hurricanes on their NFL roster than any other club except for the Cowboys. So I'm happy for he and his family to get to stay in the state of Florida. This is a Florida guy. So Warren, a consolation. Is, is this a situation where one of these days you're going to look back and say, hey, I told you so? I mean, I'm just I'm just happy that, you know, Bucks make this decision. And, you know, I'm just ready to move on and play some ball right now. You feel like you're a top three pick in this draft? <laughs> you know, right now, Tampa's pick for hopefully. And then I mean, we'll move on from there. Did you ever expect to have something like this happen to you? I mean, you know, there's always somebody looking to knock you off a pedestal. So, I mean, it doesn't really bother me that much. When you talk to the to the Buccaneers, did they try to do any kind of numbers with you right now to work something out? Well, we have some parameters. Uh, we're going to have to get together in the next couple of days and, and hire the deal out. But I don't have any problem with that because, uh, you know, it'll be something secure for him. And we feel comfortable with the 12th slot. And we're happy to be in Florida. There's no state tax there. And the Bucks have a lot of money to spend, so he'll get a big share of that. <laughs> He's already looking out for you, Warren. Uh, that's why I had him, I guess. <laughs> All right, Boomer, a relieved Warren Sapp. Yes, that's for sure, Craig. So mm -hmm. Warren Sapp go, will go with the 12th overall pick to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Relief. How do you spell it? You're looking at it. Can you figure out the cost of a long-distance call? We haven't studied that yet. What, do I look like, a mathematician? You don't need to be a math whiz to save with Sprint Sense. It's the simplest long-distance calling plan yet. Just 10 cents a minute, every evening, every night, and all weekend long. Call now for Sprint Sense, and you'll get an extra bonus, up to 100 minutes free. OK, but what are you going to pay for a minute of long distance to someone, oh, say, 3,000 miles away? 50 to 60 cents a minute. 80 cents? No, not with Sprint Sense. All your state-to-state -state calls are just 10 cents a minute for a full 12 hours every weeknight and all weekend long. And Sprint Sense couldn't be simpler. There are no calling circles, no confusing percentages. And remember, if you call now, you'll get up to 100 minutes free. Sprint will even switch you for free. So let's review. What are you going to pay for long distance? 10 little pennies. A dime a minute. I'm talking one thin dime. Very good. Call 1-800-913-9727. Hey, Chris, uh, can we ask you a few questions about the Dallas game? Yeah, sure. Where do you want me? Wherever you're comfortable. All right, I got two minutes. Now, welcome back to the NFL Draft. About two hours and 15 minutes in, and we've seen some surprises. And we've seen the resolution of the question. Where does Warren Sapp go? We now know, although we have not had the official announcement yet, but I, but I think we took you behind the scenes here, that Warren Sapp is about to be the first selection of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So there is Warren. You just heard him uh, with our Craig James. The card has come up to the commissioner. And the Buccaneers went down five slots, got some extra picks, and still got a guy they would have coveted at seven. Let's go to the podium. With the 12th pick of the first round, Tampa Bay selects defensive tackle, University of Miami, Warren Sapp. <laughs> New Orleans is now on the clock. Well, this, uh, let me say this, Joe. When it's all said and done about four or five years from now, all the defensive players that are going in this draft, I put my money on Warren Sapp being the best player in the NFL. I, I think when you were talking about the best players in this draft, I think Kajana Carter's name certainly came up, and the second guy came up was Warren Sapp. There wasn't any question about it. As a matter of fact, we talked about Warren Sapp going to Tampa Bay at the seven pick. When Tampa Bay made the trade, all they did was move down, hoping that maybe Warren Sapp would be there. So this thing played out for Sim Weiss exactly the way he wanted. He got something for the move and still got the player that I think he coveted and wanted. Rusty Tillman's got to be excited, the new defensive coordinator, because now he's got somebody a little bit like Cortez Kennedy, who he had out in Seattle, to be able to move around and wreak havoc in offensive backfield. Well, now you, tell, you mentioned Cortez Kennedy, Joe. Jerome Brown, Russell Merrill, and all first-round pick defensive tackle at Miami. Some say, I know Cortez is a great player. Jerome Brown, the late Jerome Brown, was a great player. Certainly Russell Merrill's a good player. Some say this could be the best one of them. His motor runs on every play, doesn't it? Productive player, uh, Chris, and what he does is fire up the entire club. You know, his club was trailing. The Hurricanes were trailing Florida State last year, 14-7. It was really his intensity which got this team moving, got him going, and uh, really fired this football team up. And I think when you look at Warren Sapp, 
you have to believe the allegations obviously hurt. Minnesota would have taken him with all things being equal. He slides down to Tampa Bay, and what I think he's going to have to do is prove that at 6'1", 280, he can really carve a niche for a player that size, just like a Mike Singletary did as an undersized middle linebacker coming to the Chicago Bears. Well, you saw the smile a minute ago, Mel, and there it is. It's been a very tough 24 hours for Warren, and it's going to be a, a, a tough um, five, eight years for opposing teams in the NFC Central uh, when they go up to play SAP in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let's go to Mike Gottfried at our uh, ESPN headquarters in Bristol, Connecticut. Mike, uh, no question about football ability on this young man. Chris, I don't think there's any question, but I don't. I think he's better than Russell Maryland, but not quite in the league right now as Jerome Brown or Cortez Kennedy. Let's take a look at uh, Warren Sapp. First of all, he has explosion off the ball. When the ball is snapped at Miami, you want the defensive tackles up the field. Here you see him get in the backfield, make a sack, force the quarterback down. He has great quickness. Second thing is he does, he has great awareness. Now here he's going to put his hands up. He's being double teamed. Now he's going to get his hands up to deflect the ball against Florida State. Again, awareness and knows what's going on all the time. What you want out of a defensive tackle on the inside is to collapse the inside pockets. You see him collapse the inside pocket against Boston College, causing problems for the quarterback so that he can't see and force him out of the inside pocket. All right, Coach, thank you. Warren Sapp now uh, goes down to the big sombrero. <laughs> Let's go down to Tampa Bay and uh, join Gary with Coach Sam White. Gary? Thanks, Chris. Uh, Sam, I, I don't know if I want to play poker with you guys. You played it right down to the wire. Well, I, this one goes to Rich McKay and all the guys, Tim Ruskell and uh, Jerry Angelo and all the scouts that, that uh, put a lot of time into this. But there, there's an element of luck in this draft, as there always uh, is, every year is. And uh, the fact that the, um, that the story came out about Warren is no question about it. I called Warren on the phone, and we had a nice, frank talk. And I told him, man, I'm, I'm, I, along with the Buccaneers and the new owners, the Glazier family, are putting our faith in you. And, and we can't afford to let you let us down. And he promised me, you're not going to be let down. And, and that I believe him. Was that right as you made the pick, or was that last night or this morning? No, that was just now. That's who, who was, he was talking to on the phone right there. And, and I think it's important that a player and the coach have that heart-to-heart -heart talk. And there's an element of, uh, you know, we're in the foxhole together kind of a deal. And I think as you've listened to other coaches talk, there's been a lot of coaches that said he's a great player. They're, uh, they had other needs. No one has really uh, said that this guy is not somebody that can't come in and play for a long time in the NFL. Did you ask him, or will he be required to, to submit to any special drug testing? Uh, he will and wants to, wants to prove himself. Th when you come in like this, so exposed, so publicly being pointed to like this, I think it's uh, in your favor to say, I want everybody to know that I can control myself. I have maybe stump my toe, but I'm a different guy. I made a different fiber, and I'm going to prove it to my public. All right, one last question. I, I, I know you were in the middle of that thing with uh, Bill Walsh and Rosano about who took uh, Montana. Why don't you clear it up? Well, I, I, I tell you, can we go to sidebar on this one? Chris this Mortensen, we're going to sidebar on this. <laughs> well, the thing, about, the thing about Warren Sapp is he's going to come into this league under a new drug plan and the first step in that drug plan is that he would be asked to, he would undergo evaluation and after that evaluation if they recommend testing or if they recommend outpatient or inpatient inpatient treatment uh, if he refused to do that then there might be some sanctions but the bottom line is Drew Rosenhaus his agent actually had him tested twice since the Indianapolis scouting combine submitted that test to some clubs and they, they were negative tests and as all along has told clubs that Warren's willing to prove himself in any way possible that he is drug free. Let's go back to Chris in New York. All right, more thank you. So Warren Sapp becomes the 12th pick in the draft. He goes to Tampa Bay. Their first round selection. New Orleans is next on the clock. There's the smile. We'll be back. Have you had your break today? We all need you get away. Now that you've given her away, you'll always cherish the memories. You'll always remember the joy. And you'll never forget the bill. 
$220 for parts. But hey, isn't that why you got Visa Gold in the first place? With all the purchase power to handle any occasion. Even the most precious. Visa Gold, it's everywhere you want to be. Who will steal the wind? And rule the sea? The challenge has stood for over 140 years. Who will be the defender? Who will rise to the challenge? The America's Cup Defender Finals on ESPN. Welcome back to the NFL Draft. The New Orleans Saints are on the clock. A little less than eight minutes to go for their selection. And then the Buffalo Bills and the Indianapolis Colts are after them. Let's go to Dallas, uh, to Chris Myers, uh, who has some uh, thought process on the Saints. They could go uh, any one of uh, three directions, I think, Chris. Yeah, they've uh, designated five top defensive players, and currently Ellis Johnson, defensive lineman from Florida, and the linebacker Mark Fields from Washington State are at the top of that list. But, Chris, they determined an hour ago that even though they need help on defense, and that's the area they want to go, that no way would they take Warren Sapp based on the information that's there. So they weren't going to select him anyway. There is a possibility the Saints could trade down and still get their defensive player. The Raiders have contacted them about possibly trading up to draft running back Tyrone Wheatley, the Giants who choose a ahead of the Raiders are a team that also may be looking at running back. Uh, now let's go back to Chris Berman in New York. All right, Chris, thank you. While the Saints still deliberating, there's a little less than seven minutes to go on their selection. Uh, it has been a 24 hours that certainly Warren Sapp and his uh, confidants and his family and, and those uh, surrounding him uh, will not forget for a long time. Uh, 24 hours that must have seemed faster than a New York minute. This past Thursday, April 20th, Teams interested in SAP asked for the NFL security background check run on the player. Chris Mortensen double-checked the sources before going on air with the story last night. Their background check by NFL security has produced seven positive drug tests by SAP, uh, six for marijuana, one for cocaine. Also last night, ESPN's Chris Berman spoke with Seattle Seahawks coach Dennis Erickson by telephone. Erickson was SAP's college coach. Erickson told Berman that Sapp had tested positive for marijuana twice during his college career, once during Sapp's freshman year, once during his senior year. Sapp's agent issued a blanket denial. I'd say that report is totally false. Uh, a, Warren has never tested positive for any type of uh, cocaine uh, substance, uh, nor has he ever had any multiple uh, failures or, or positive tests for marijuana. This morning, Erickson also denied the NFL security report cited by Mortensen. The seven positives, uh, the cocaine, uh, I mean, that's absolutely uh, a lie and uh, not true at all. And, and uh, that did not, uh, Warren Sapp did not, or was not, I should say, involved in, any, in, in those uh, accusations. Have either Sapp or his agent gotten in touch with you since ESPN went on the air with this report last night? No, I have not talked to, to his agent or to Warren uh, about this uh, uh, since you guys went on the air with it last night. Did you talk last night with Dennis, er Dennis Erickson? Yes, I did. You know, and I was trying to figure out where these things were coming from. Coach Erickson was obviously there, and he was shocked to hear these reports because these guys have been together, and there was never any problems. Are you denying telling Chris Berman last night that Sapp twice tested positive for marijuana use at the University of Miami? All I'm telling you is I cannot talk uh, about any of the players at the University of Miami as far as the drug testing is concerned. That's, that's all I can tell you. I don't think that there's a tremendous amount of concern. I think the teams that were interested in drafting Warren before the reports that surfaced last night are still going to take him. I still see him going in the top ten. Some of the teams with real thin skin, they might be scared away by this bogus media stuff. But, hey, that's fine because, you know, he wouldn't want to play for those guys anyhow. All right, Warren, what about the two positive tests? I mean... I, like we said, I mean, it's total fabrication. I mean, I don't even know where it's coming from. So, I mean, whoever somebody's getting it from, I mean, I just ask them to show some proof, man. That's what you said. With the 12th pick of the first round, Tampa Bay selects defensive tackle, University of Miami, Warren 